Apixel Skyblock is a confusing game. You join, stranded on one of two islands, and given absolutely no direction or objective at all. And once you do make it somewhere, there's like 30 different confusing menus, none of which are explained anywhere more than a single paragraph of text. How this is still the case three years after release is beyond me. But in this video, I'm going to try and guide you through all the important parts of the game and set you up with a good starting point to start playing the game. Also, I'll be doing this video completely free to play, so you don't need to spend any real life money to follow this guide. But in case you do decide to spend money to buy Skyblock gems for booster cookies or even a rank aka basic human rights, please consider using code HELCASTLE at the checkout. It gives you a 5% discount on whatever you're buying and helps supporting us a lot. To start this video off, I am going to do a quick explanation of some of the very basics of this game for people who have never played the game before at all. If you're a returning player looking for a refresher or have played a bit before, skip to the timestamp on screen now. Right, absolute basics. Hypixel Skyblock is a game mode on the Hypixel Minecraft server for the Java edition on Minecraft. It can be joined on any modern version of Minecraft with the server IP Hypixel.net. Most players use the 1.8.9 version of Minecraft for better PvP and mod support, but there is no PvP in Skyblock and mods are optional, so it's totally fine to just use the newest version of Minecraft if that's what you prefer. Once you're in Hypixel, open up your navigation menu and click Skyblock. From there, you're on your very own Skyblock island and ready to follow this tutorial. Okay, everyone back? Good. Quick notes for this tutorial, I'll be playing on a basically vanilla version of Minecraft 1.8.9 to illustrate how a normal player's experience would look. A majority of players do use mods and texture packs that make the game feel more like an actual game and less like Minecraft. If you watch any other YouTube videos, including my own, you will probably see them being used. For the sake of this tutorial, I will only be using my own texture pack which gives custom Skyblock items their own textures because it makes things easier to follow as a viewer. Your game won't look like this by default, but there is a link in the description to download the pack and use it. Okay, first things first, we need to get off this island. The funny thing about Skyblock is that barely anything important actually happens on your own Skyblock island. Think of it more like an MMORPG where things just happen to be built on floating islands because they didn't want to copy Minecraft. If you've played Minecraft before, you've probably already instinctively broken the tree on your island and bridged over to the second island where you'll notice a few things. Firstly, there's a big portal here. That's not normal. Second, there's this weird thing mining cobblestone. And third, there's a chest in a cave full of all the normal Skyblock essentials, but we are not going to need these. This thing mining cobblestone is a minion. Minions are weird creatures that form resources for you whilst you're offline, because much like real life, the economy of this game cannot function without the exploitation of cheaper labor. They've probably collected some cobblestone right now, which you can take for yourself and make some tools with. You can leave them to do their thing for the time being though. We'll talk more about minions later. Once you've got yourself a classic set of tools, we're ready to brave the real world of Skyblock by heading through the big purple portal. Once going through, you're taken to a place called the Skyblock Hub. This is basically where your normal Skyblock experience ends and you'll be given a quest to talk to all 12 villagers in the hub. Ignore it. This quest is pointless and doesn't go anywhere but it's still a good idea to have a walk around the village and see what's what. You can also talk to this one villager, Jamie, who will give you a sword that gives you a speed boost when right clicked, which I find quite useful for just getting around places faster. Last thing to note is a very useful command, slash witty this. When you type slash witty this whilst holding an item, it will open the official Hypixel wiki page where you can read information about the item. Use this if you are ever confused about what to do with something. Right, with that out of the way, I can start the guide. For this guide, I will be doing a walkthrough of the early game whilst explaining basically every major mechanic you need to know. The game is actually very open in how you approach it 
and you don't have to follow what I do exactly at all if you want to do something else. But what I do will guide you through the early game with a good understanding of what is happening. The first thing I'm going to do is a bit of mining. To start our mining adventure, we need to head straight ahead from the hub spawn and into the coal mines where we can mine some coal. After mining a little bit, you'll notice you get a pop-up in chat telling you that you have reached mining level 1. But what exactly does this mean? Mining is one of 7 main skills in Skyblock. Skills are one of the major parts of Skyblock and are composed of 60 levels of increasing difficulty and time to achieve. Each of these skills is leveled up by doing the task related to it. So, mining levels up mining, farming levels up farming, you get the point. Every time you level up one of these skills, you are rewarded with a small stat boost and occasionally are given the ability to use items or access areas that you were previously unable to. In the case of mining level 1, we just unlocked access to the gold mine, as well as two stats and some scablet XP. We'll talk about those other things a bit later, but now that we have the ability to, we may as well make our way to the better gold mines by heading on the jump pad all the way down the coal mines. As with joining any new area for the first time, we're given a list of tasks that we should consider doing here. Usually these aren't too helpful, but the very first line suggests we should talk to the lazy miner, and this is actually a good idea because he's going to give us a better pickaxe. Have a quick chat with him, and then follow this path down to the mine to find this pickaxe. You can try giving it back, but he doesn't want it, and it's yours to keep. The special part of this pickaxe is that it has an enchantment called Smelting Touch. As the name suggests, it smelts everything it touches, turning the ores you mine into bars. With this, we can mine a bunch of iron and gold ingots, which you will notice gives you more mining XP than coal did. And we're going to do this until mining level 5, where we unlock access to the deep caverns, which is the next mining area. I'll let you in on a bit of a secret though. The deep caverns are not completely safe, and there are enemies there that will try to kill you. Because, you know, this is a video game and every video game mine has to have zombies in it. You'll also notice that you've probably got a load of coins, and we're going to spend these in order to buy something to protect ourselves. Let's head back to the hub, either through the jump pad or just type in slash hub as a command in chat. From here, we can buy an undead sword, which is better than our stone sword, and deals double damage to undead enemies, making it great at defeating zombies. We can also buy ourselves a set of iron armor from Rosetta. These NPCs will not sell us some of their better items until we get a higher combat level, so you can bet we'll be coming back here later. There's also not much of a reason to hold on to the resources we just mined, and we can sell them to the NPCs for more coins. All NPCs offer the same price for all items, so it doesn't matter where you sell them. Lastly, we're going to deposit our remaining coins into the bank, just in case we die, as dying means you lose 50% of the coins you carry on you, but you will never lose coins that are in your bank. Now that we're equipped, we can make our way back across to the deep caverns and engage in combat for the first time. In the deep caverns, we are going to walk all the way down to the bottom of the mines in order to unlock the ability to go down to them instantly with the lift operator. Whilst I'm walking, I'm going to explain why we're actually here. Firstly, collections. Every base material item in this game has a collection, which is essentially a lifelong counter of how many of that resource you have collected, and a list of these can be accessed through the Skyblock menu. Every collection has milestones, and every milestone you reach unlocks new crafting recipes of various items that you can look into yourself. Second, there are some enemies down here that we can grind for armor as well as combat experience that will make us stronger and allow us to buy some better gear. On the way down, it's a good idea to collect the items you see on screen. You'll see why in a minute. If your inventory starts getting full, you can open your Stablock menu and head over to the Ender Chest option, where you start with access to two Ender Chest slots that you can stash your items away in. Once you have all this, we can make our way back home by typing slash is in the chat as a command, or jumping into the big portal in the hub. 
Back on our island now, we're finally going to do some minion magic. First, build a decent sized platform on your island so that we actually have space to place the minions. Each one needs a 5x5 five five area, and we're going to be placing 7 of them. We already have one good position where the cobblestone minion we started with is placed, and it just so happens that the two islands we start with are 15 blocks apart. So, it only made sense to make two 15x15 15 15 platforms on either side of our bridge. You may need to go back and mine to get some more cobblestone if you run out of some to build with, and if you check the cobblestone minion, they probably have some for you too. Also, place a centered block slightly higher in the middle of each 5x5 five five square. This is where we will be placing the minions. To craft some more minions, we're going to need to make some wood tools, which means we need some more wood. If you've already ran out, we can go back to the Skyblock hub and mine some in the forest over here. Or, if you're lazy like me, you can just destroy your bridge and reuse that wood. There's also some wood in the cave under the second island. Our minion of choice for today is the redstone minion, because we want to try and unlock more things in the redstone collection. And if you haven't already realized, the pigmen in the redstone mines don't really like it when you mine redstone around them. We want this because it will unlock a larger accessory bag for us, which gives us an extra inventory space to store accessories. We don't actually have any of those right now, but we will in the future, and they'll be very important to us. To craft our redstone minions, we need to surround a wooden pickaxe with 16 redstone dust in each slot, for a total of 2 sets of redstone dust each. If you mind what I told you to, we should have enough for 3 minions. Once crafted, we can place them on their blocks and they will get to work automatically, even when you are offline. You'll have noticed when placing the minions that you have a limited number of slots, only 5 right now. However, we can increase this number by crafting unique minions, which are minions you have never crafted before, and this is why we mind all those other seemingly pointless resources. When you craft your fourth unique minion, you'll be given a message in chat informing you that you have unlocked the sixth minion slot. Unlocking our seventh minion slot is going to make a further 10 unique minions. From what we've mined, we should have two more of those, but that leaves us with seven more unique minions we need to craft. Let's quickly go into a bit more details about what minions do though. Minions will automatically collect resources for you all the time, whether you are online or not. Any resources they collect are stored inside their own inventories and can be collected at any time, but their inventories have limited space. Our minions here are especially bad, given that they only have one inventory slot. However, this can be improved. These are just tier 1 minions. Most minions can go up to tier 12, and each tier upgrade provides a boost to either storage or collection speed. To upgrade a minion, we can either craft it with more material in a crafting table or click the quick upgrade button whilst we have the material in our inventory to upgrade it. Each tier of minions also counts as a unique minion towards unlocking a slot. If we check the minion upgrade button, they say they need 256 redstone to upgrade to tier 2. On the side, there are also slots for minion skins, minion fuel to make it mine faster, a slot for automated selling, and two more for upgrades. These don't have much of a use until a bit later in the game though. What you will have noticed is that the minions have filled the area around them with some redstone ore, and will continue to do so as long as there are holes around them. We can mine this as if it was any other ore, and then use it to produce three more redstone minions to fill all sets of our slots with redstone minions. This also means picking up the cobblestone minion and getting rid of it for the time being, because he really isn't all that useful. With these 6 redstone minions, we can let them mine things whilst we go and do more important things. It should take them around 12 minutes to fill the area around them with redstone ore for the first time, and a further 60 minutes to fill their inventories, so we should aim to come back and collect from these minions every 8 minutes whenever that is possible. Use the redstone you collect to upgrade the minions to tier 2, and then to tier 3 after that. Trust me, it's very worth it. Our end goal with these minions is to get to 200,000 redstone collection, 
this will unlock a 21 slot accessory bag which should be more than big enough to last through the early game and mid game of Skyblock. Issue is, at our current rate, this is going to take about 6 days of constantly checking on these minions every 12 minutes, and that isn't very fun. So we're going to speed this up, first by getting our 7th minion slot, and second by increasing their storage a huge amount so that we don't have to keep collecting from them. To do this, we're going to have to go logging for a bit in order to unlock this item at 500 outward storage, the small minion chest, which will give our minions 3 more slots to work with. It's also an opportunity for us to get 6 more unique minions, one of each wood type, to unlock our 7th slot. Before starting this, we can quickly go and grab materials for a gold axe because it's the fastest axe and tools don't have durability in this game like they do in vanilla. If we want, we can also go to the library where we can apply some basic enchantments to the axe, in this case, efficiency 5. You'll notice we haven't unlocked many enchantments yet, and that's because we unlock more by leveling up the enchanting skill, but we won't be needing much to do with that right now. To unlock better logging areas, we're going to have to level up our foraging skill. The foraging skill is probably the simplest in the game as it is leveled by just breaking log blocks and there isn't really any custom element to it outside of two axes that we can't really access right now. But there are plans to update this skill in the future, so if you're watching this video like 6 months in the future, this part of the game may look very different to you. Anyway, we're going to collect at least 528 oak logs and 80 logs of the other wood types. If you really wanted to get ahead, you could collect 240 of the other logs instead and craft the tier 2 minion which will help go towards your minion slots. This shouldn't take too long, and at the end of it, you can craft up all your minions and another redstone minion using resources your existing minions mined, and then 7 small minion storages which you can place next to your 7 redstone minions to give them 3 more storage slots. This now means we only have to check on our minions every hour or so. Great. Before going and getting some accessories to fill our slots with, we're going to quickly get combat level 5 and buy ourselves some better gear. You probably have some combat level from your time in the mines. My level was 4 after being there, but to get to that level 5, we can just kill some of the wheat zombies in the hub graveyard. From here, we all have a choice to make. There are two armor sets and weapons we can buy at combat level 5, the Celeste set and the Squire set. The main difference is that the Celeste set is for magic damage, and the Squire set is for melee damage and defense. The choice you made here is not permanent at all and you aren't locked into a class or anything, but it will change the way you approach the game. Personally, I have always preferred melee, so I'll choose the Squire set for this walkthrough, but if you want to choose the magic path, feel free to do that too. This tutorial will just be a bit less relevant to you at some points. However, as it turns out, we're actually broke and can't really afford anything. Not to worry, we can come back here and buy the item piece by piece as we can afford them. It is also worth noting that the Squire Sword is actually a weaker weapon than our Undead Sword, due to the 100% damage bonus on the Undead Sword. We're also going to grab ourselves a spider sword from the weaponsmith because zombies aren't the only danger we'll be dealing with in the near future. Our next journey is going to take us to the first combat island in the game, the spider's den. This island is split into two parts, the above ground which is going to be perfect for us new players, and underground which is a little tough right now but we'll absolutely be coming back for. However, what I suggest doing here is heading up the hill to grandma's house. There are some NPCs you can talk with here for some information, but the main NPC here is Grandma Wolf, which will give you your first ever Skyblock pet. Pets work kinda like a fifth armor slot, giving you stat boosts and abilities but with the additional catch that they become more powerful as they level up. Our new Grandma Wolf pet is a combat pet, meaning it levels up fastest when we gain combat HP but we'll also level up when we gain XP from other skills, just at a slower rate. We can see from its description that the pet gives us additional strength stat and health stat, as well as an extra ability that provides extra boosts for killing multiple enemies in quick succession. To change or summon pets, we can open the pets menu from our Skyblock menu, 
And there's also an option in here to make the pets invisible so their floating heads doesn't annoy us. The Grandma Wolf isn't particularly a good pet, but it is completely free and better than nothing. We can get something much better later. Anyhow, if you run around this place for long enough, you quickly start to realize that everything actually really doesn't want you to be here and will try to kill you. And they're pretty good at the whole killing you part as well. As a result, we need to invest a bit more time into getting stronger. The best way to do this is to reforge our gear and unlock some accessories. I know we only have three accessory batch slots right now, but by the time we get to accessories, we should have unlocked a bigger bag and gained enough coins to get into reforging, which I'll explain when we get there. On screen now, I've put a list of 10 of the easiest accessories in the game to unlock, and we're gonna want to get 9 of these as that's how much space our accessory bag will have soon. It take me forever to go through telling you how to get all of these, so instead, I'm tasking you with looking these up on the wiki and figuring out how to get them. They should all be quick, easy and doable, and will take you around a few parts of Skyblock that you have not seen before. For example, the Farming Talisman and Vaccine Talisman requires you to level up your farming by going around the farming islands. Either way, by getting all of these accessories, you should also gain a fair amount of coins that we're going to need later. You'll also encounter a ton of new resources, which you can use to craft some new unique minions to work towards more slots. Don't worry if all of the accessories effects look totally pointless. There is a reason we're getting all of these random effects, and as an extra tip, if you find yourself running between islands a lot, you can type slash visit portal hub to visit an island that has a portal leading to every single place in Skyblock, which is a lot faster than having to walk there. There's even some cakes you can eat that provide stat boosts for two days. Once you've gotten your nine accessories, and if you've been collecting your minions regularly, you'll hopefully have a big enough accessory bag to put them in. You'll notice that we have gathered 29 of something called magic power. This is a really obscure and weird feature of Skyblock, where collecting unique accessories gives you this power, and there's this one place in the hub where you can exchange this magic power for stat boosts. I have no idea how any new player is supposed to figure out what this means or that this even exists without watching a video about it, but if you walk into the building and talk to Maxwell by clicking options in the chat, you can get some stat boosts for your magic power. For the time being, I recommend choosing the option that provides the most crit chance stat because a big part of maximizing our damage at this stage of the game is going to be trying to get our critical hit chance as close or equal to 100% as possible. The other stats of strength and crit damage we should try to get as close together as possible in terms of number to min max damage, but as long as our crit chance is not 100%, we should take whatever we can to get it to that point. Final touches before we can get into the combat section of the game, we're going to want to get and reforge a decent set of armor. If you haven't already, that means getting our hands on the Squire or Celeste armor sets, which require getting a fair bit of money. Luckily for us, the Stablock developers made a very questionable balancing decision that we can take advantage of. Around the Spider's Den, there are 28 relics hidden around the map that are part of some quest line but they are also good because they give us 10,000 coins every time you collect one. That means if we can get all of them, we can get a really easy 280,000 coins. But we don't even need that much, we only need 24,000. So by collecting just 3 relics, we can get our armor set and have some money left to spare. If you're watching this at some point in the future and this gets changed, you can just easily get the coins you need by mining sand with an efficiency 5 shovel, or just running around and farming various items in different lobbies. Anyway, by using an online guide, we can find 3 of these relics that are in fairly safe positions to grab and then use this money to get the squire armor. With our leftovers, we can quickly give the blacksmith some coal to complete his quest and unlock reforging, which allows us to add stat boosts to our armor and weapons. Each reforge costs 500 coins, so we can't do this infinitely, but it's a good idea to try to go for fierce as a reforge since it provides a good amount of offensive stats which are really what we need right now. 
I'd also settle for pure if it comes up, but anything that is only pure defense and health aren't all too important right now. For the swords, Sharp provides the highest amount of critical strike chance, so that's what I'll go with. We can also reforge tools to give them a small amount of wisdom, which is a stat that increases the amount of skill experience gained whilst using the tool. The last improvement we can do is quickly putting a band of arthropods enchantment on our spider sword. There are a lot more enchantments we could be putting on both armor and sword, but we don't currently have a consistent method of earning XP and we're going to be upgrading out of this stuff very soon anyway. With all that said, we're going to want to work towards getting a more permanent and usable armor set, and for that, we need combat level 9. This should be simple enough, as we now have a load of spiders that we can grind for combat XP. Currently, we aren't really all that strong and probably can't deal with the underground spiders, but the spiders in the mound up here should provide us a fairly good resource. In between doing this, don't forget to check on and upgrade the redstone minions, and use all the spider drops to create even more unique minions. Anyhow, back to Rosetta, we now get to choose between two more armor sets, the mercenary set and the starlight set. These sets are special, because they both provide a boost for wearing the whole set. The only issue is that they're both 210,000 coins, which is money we don't have and can't get without emptying the spider's den of its relics. As fun as it would be to do that, we don't have the mobility or survivability required to even reach half of them, so that's off the table. Instead, we're going to have to get creative. There are still some spider relics we can get safely if we're careful, but these are not going to get us all the money we need either. What we need to do is unlock something called the Bazaar, a marketplace for almost every stackable item in Skyblock that allows for the buying and selling of huge amounts of materials between players in a single click. Currently, the items we sell from our grinds are only worth 1 or 2 coins each when sold to NPCs, but some of these items can be worth up to 5 coins when we're selling them to other players. To unlock the bazaar, we need to reach Skyblock level 7. Skyblock levels are a fairly new and unfinished feature that serves as an indicator of how much of the game you have played and completed. Currently from everything I've done, I've reached level 5, and you're probably around a similar area. If we check the rewards for higher levels, we can see that at level 6, we unlock the ability to auto-collect dropped items instead of having them go on the floor, and then at level 7, we unlock the bazaar. The other Skyblock levels don't matter much, but an update to these is coming in the future. To find out what we can do to gain Stablock levels, there is a button called Ways to Earn Stablock XP, which gives you a list of tasks you can do, and we need to do whatever we need to reach that level 7. Some of the easier ways include leveling up your skills, completing the small quests that appear on the side of your screen, slaying bosses, playing songs on this harp that exists in the park for some reason, and a few other things. Choose whatever you think is best for you, and use it as an opportunity to explore parts of the game that I haven't really covered in this tutorial. If anything confuses you, the official wiki is here to help. I personally didn't need much more XP, so I decided to do the first tier and level of the Zombie Slayer miniboss, get a bunch of early collection progress on farming collections, and take up a spot of fishing. After all that, I had unlocked the bazaar and could use the quick sell button to sell all of the items I had just collected for a pretty penny. The bazaar will automatically sort out who are you selling to, which makes buying and selling a one-click process unless you want to set up a specific order for buying and selling, but this is never really worth your time so early into the game. Anyway, this opens up a couple more options for grinding coins and makes our previous methods more effective. The best thing this has opened for us, however, is taking part in events which occur occasionally around Skyblock. Check your calendar and see what's going on at any given time. There is always a Halloween event and Christmas event once every 5 real life days, and if you can catch that, it's going to make you a lot of coins. If none of these events are around, you can still make a lot of coins by basically being a bottom feeder of Skyblock and gathering resources. Two particularly good resources for early game players are mining gravel and sand. Not the most interesting of tasks, 
but a stack of flint sells for 1300 coins as of the time of recording, and is usually very abundant in the mines of the spider den. For the sake of this video, I'm going to do the gravel mining option because I know it's something that will be consistent for everybody watching the video. Whilst doing this, it is also a good idea to purchase some compactors from the bazaar. These are minion upgrades that will make our minion craft redstone dust into redstone blocks, essentially multiplying their storage space by 9, which should mean we only need to collect from them twice a day now. Remember, we need to keep these minions around until we have 200,000 collection ideally, so everything helps. Anyway, I did some mining off camera and now have a whole lot of flint I can sell. From this, I can get just under 240,000 coins, and that's enough to get myself a shiny set of mercenary armor. Same as before, reforging everything. Except, this time the set is worth going a step further with, because we're going to be fighting bosses with it. It is also worth putting our old armor set up for auction, to maybe get some coins back from it. I'll explain the auction house in a bit more depth at the end of the video, because it's not really relevant to what we're doing right now. If we test our gear out, we can already see that we're stronger than before, but that doesn't mean we can't go further. First, we need to quickly buy some materials to make a vanilla style enchanting table, and then make one on your island. If you have no idea what that looks like, just copy what I did. In Skyblock, we can add and remove enchantments in a single click, even from items that already have enchantments. And the general idea here is that we want to basically put every single enchantment possible on our items. This will take a little bit of effort, but the easiest way to do this is to simply grind our lapis collection up and unlock grand experience bottles that we can use to splash ourselves with a ton of XP. But before setting off on this adventure, it helps to put fortune 3 on your pickaxe or you'll be mining for twice as long as you need to. If you don't have the XP for this, go mining anyway, and then come back as soon as you have 45 levels. From here, we're basically just going to mine 10,000 lapis and hold on to it all, and then craft it into grand experience bottles and enchant from there. I promise we're going to get into some combat soon, but there is a whole lot of non-combat content in this game too. If lapis isn't your thing, you could always go back to one of the previous money making methods and then buy the grand experience bottles for around two and a half thousand each. Or you could get a pickaxe with the experience enchantment and mine diamond ores with it to get the XP manually, although this can get quite tedious with the going back and forth. The redstone ore on your island from minions is also a good source of experience. On screen now are a list of all the useful enchantments you should have unlocked by now that you should put on your gear. If you're lazy, you don't have to, and if you really want, you can add more. But what you see on screen is all you should need. Make sure you head back to your island to enchant a piece every time you reach the required experience level. At the end of this all, you should have a solid armor set with a good 700 health and 300 defense, and we can go test this out on the strong underground spiders in the spider's den. And sure enough, we can survive basically anything, out healing all damage from our lifesteal enchant and the set bonus on our armor. Having this sort of power allows us to take on the first proper boss of Skyblock. To summon Arachne, we need to find and kill these rare enemies called Arachne's Keepers, or as a rare drop from every spider in the underground to get items called Arachne's Stalling. Placing four of these items alone or with other people will spawn a boss that you can fight. And you probably should do this because the drops from the boss are worth quite a lot and this will be a much more efficient money method than anything you've been doing so far. There's also the next armor set, Arachne armor, which drops from the boss. Although it's worth noting that this set isn't actually much better than the mercenary set we already have, and the set bonus on our mercenary set might actually be better than the defensive bonuses given by the Arachne armor. It's up to you. The last thing to note about the spiders and our armor in general is that we actually have 8 armor slots, not just 4. If you open your menu and head over here, you actually have four more slots where you can put four different pieces of armor, and we can actually get the first of these from the spider's den, each of them being one out of 25 drop from the Arachne Keepers. It's quite rare, but if you happen to get one, you should equip it for free stat boosts. All eight of the Arachne armor pieces are soulbound, which means they cannot be sold or bought, so 
you are going to have to earn these yourself instead of buying them from the auction house. Once you're confident with your damage and defense numbers and reach combat level 12, you can head over to the end island to begin new adventures. And that's where I'm ending the guide. You should now have a pretty good profile and a good understanding of the game, assuming you've been paying attention. Before the video ends though, here is a few pointers on what you should be doing next. Make sure to check other people's videos about things or the official wiki if you need clarification or help for anything. First thing you should be doing is collecting fairy souls. This is part of a big game launch quest that encourages you to explore the maps of islands in the game. For every 5 souls you collect, you can exchange them at a fairy NPC in the hub in exchange for some tablet XP and unlocking more ender chest slots, which you'll quickly find extremely useful. Buying ender pearls from the bazaar will really help with this. As for other things, combat level 12 will have unlocked the end and everything inside it. There is an NPC there that will guide you around the island and getting a much better 8 piece armor set for the end island as well as a better sword you can buy for 200,000 coins. Combat level 15 will unlock the Catacombs Dungeon, a multiplayer experience that's quite fun, at least the first few times. The armor sets you can unlock from the Catacombs are very good for the mid game and early late game, but even some of the low tier mob drops can have armor sets that are much stronger than what you can usually find in some parts of the game. At the bottom of the deep caverns, is an NPC who you can speak to in order to unlock the Dwarven Mines and subsequent Crystal Hollows. A deep bit of mining and adventure content that you'll quickly find yourself sinking hours into. There's very good coins to be made here, amongst other things. Don't neglect accessories. Keep collecting your redstone minions to unlock a bigger bag and then keep collecting new accessories to increase your magic power. There are other magic powers you can unlock with stones from various places. You'll notice you get a few of these from fighting Arachne. Change the powers to suit your needs, and don't be afraid to try new things. Try using the auction house. You can usually get cheaper gear from other players here and sell your own unwanted items. When you're done with your mercenary armor, this is where you should put it. There are two main types of auction. Bin auctions, where items have a set price and can sell instantly, and traditional auction style auctions, where players bid on items for a set amount of time. There is a lot more to this game than what I mentioned, but these are all the things that should be fairly within your reach that you can do from the profile we created in this guide. The most important thing, of course, is to go for the things you find the most fun, and maybe get a friend or two to join you since it makes the experience better. Maybe even send them this video to help them get into the game as well. Feel free to rewatch parts of the vid if you didn't understand some things or check the wiki. And if you found this video useful, please use our code Hellcastle in the Hypixel store checkout if you decide to buy gems or a rank. It helps us a lot. You also get a 5% discount for using the code. And feel free to comment any questions you have and we will try to answer. Okay, see ya, have a nice day.